Hello everyone. I am back with the second chapter of building materials that is timber. In this video we will be covering three topics in timber that is classification of timber, structure of timber and general properties of timber. First is classification of timber. Timber can be classified on the basis of their mode of growth on the basis of modulus of elasticity on their durability and on ease, on their ease of seasoning first is based on the mode of growth based on the mode of growth these trees or timber can be classified as exogenous trees and endogenous trees first is exogenous trees these are the type of trees which grows in bulk in outward direction timber used for engineering purposes is mostly derived from these trees for example eucalyptus teak sal etc next is endogenous trees these are type of trees which grows in bulk in inward direction trees obtained from sorry timber obtained from these trees are used in minor engineering works minor engineering works means for shattering purposes and all major engineering work purposes means they can be used as columns beams etc so major engineering purposes we are using exogenous trees in minor engineering works we are using endogenous trees example of endogenous trees are cane palm bamboo etc exogenous trees can be classified into two conifers and deciduous trees let's see them one by one conifers trees as the name suggests they have a cone shaped fruits they have needle shaped leaves they are always evergreen trees they not shed their leaves and other property is they have a distinct annular rings annual rings we will see that in later in the video and indistinct medullary rays they have very soft weak lightweight and resinous timber its examples are chir pine spruce deodar fir kale and larch i have given this much example because later in this uh, video we will see the uses of different timbers next type of exogenous trees is deciduous trees deciduous trees mainly have broad leaves they will shed their leaves in autumn and again the leaves will come back in spring and like conifers they have indistinct annular rings distinct medullary rays these types of exogenous trees are used for engineering purposes they have a very hard firm heavy dark color timber examples are oak sal teak babul mahogany shisham maple etc next is a different classification that is softwood and hardwood let's check out their difference by their properties coming to their color softwood have a lighter color and hardwood have darker color softwood grow faster while hardwood that is more heavy will grow in a slower rate density of the softwood is low compared to the hardwood coming to the annual rings for softwood they have a very distinct annual rings but hardwood have indistinct annual rings in softwood the strength is along the grains only in hardwood we can get the suitable strength both along and across the grains 
Conversion of the soft wood is comparatively easy than hard wood. Soft wood is mostly resinous and hard wood is non-resinous. Examples of soft wood are most of the conifers. Example of the hard wood are the deciduous trees. Next is based on the modulus of elasticity. Based on the modulus of elasticity, we can say classify timber as class A, class B and class C. Class A timber means the modulus of elasticity is greater than the value 12.5. Class B the E value or the modulus of elasticity value will be between 12.5 to 9.8. Class C it is 9.8 to 5.6. Next is based on their durability. They can be classified as highly durable, medium durable and low durable trees. High durable trees will grow more than 10 years. Medium trees will have an average life of about 5 years. Low durable trees will last only below 5 years. Based on the ease of seasoning, trees can be or the timber can be classified as non-refractory, medium refractory and high refractory. Medium refractory means it can be seasoned easily. We will see what is seasoning and different types of seasoning in the later videos. So non-refractory means it can be seasoned very easily. For example, deodor chip. Next is medium refractory. They will twist and warp on seasoning. For example, teak. High refractory means they get severely damaged on seasoning. For example, oak. Next is structure of timber. This is the section of a timber. The innermost part is the pith. Surrounding the pit, there is hardwood. Surrounding the hardwood, there is sapwood. Surrounding the sapwood, there is a cambium layer. And the outermost part is called the bark. So, the let's see the section from inside. The innermost part is a pit. Or it is also called as medulla. Then the hardwood. Then the sapwood. Then bark. Sorry, then the cambium. And finally, the bark that can be classified into the inner bark or outer bark. Let's see the section one by one. First is pith and sometimes called as medulla. It is the innermost part or the core of a tree, which varies in size and shape as per the tree. It almost entirely consists of cellular tissues, which are used for the growth of trees in their young age. But as the tree grows old, it dies and decays. That is, it neither takes place, take any active role in the growth of the tree, nor impart any strength to it. Next is the hardwood. The inner annual, annular rings surrounding the pith contribute to the hardwood. It is dark in color, which indicates that the dead portion of the tree but it imparts strength and rigidity to the tree. Next is the sapwood or sometimes called as alburnum. Outer annual rings in between the hardwood and the cambium layer contribute the sapwood. It is generally light in color which indicates that it takes place, takes an active part in the growth of tree and it helps in the transportation of food and water. Next is the cambium layers. A thin layer of sap surrounding the sap wood which is yet to be converted to sap wood is known as a cambium layer. That means it indicates the future growth of a tree. Next is 
medullary rays. Radial fibers extending from the pith to the cambium layer is called as medullary rays. They hold the annual rings of heartwood and the sapwood in position and thereby imparting some strength to it. Next is the annual rings or the growth rings. By counting the annual rings, we can say the age of a particular tree. That is the use of the annual rings. That is very important. Next is the bark. A protective layer provided around the cambium layer is termed as the bark. Bark can also be uh, classified into two. The outer bark that is the cortex and the inner bark that is called as bust. That's all about the section of a timber. Next is some basic definitions we are going to see. This type of questions will be asked in the state PSC exams and also in ISR exams. First is a standing timber. A timber in a living tree is called as a standing timber. Next is rough timber. After falling of the tree of a tree, the timber obtained from is called as a rough timber. Next is converted timber. This rough timber is cut or sawn into suitable shapes that si shapes and size that we need. That is known as a converted timber or commercial timber. Next is clear timber. Clear timber means timber which is free of defects. We will discuss the defects in timber in detail in other videos. Next are some basic properties of timber. First one is the specific gravity. Specific gravity of the all the trees is 1.54. Because we are only uh, accounting the solid portion in the tree. So, the specific gravity is 1.54. But the mass specific gravity is different. Specific gravity as it is means it is a weight specific gravity. That is 1.54. But the mass specific gravity is different. We will see in detail what is the difference between the weight specific gravity and the mass specific gravity in our geotechnical chapters. Next point is. Weight of timber is usually taken at a moisture content of 12%. In some textbook it is uh, given as 15% but in most of the exams the option will be 12%. Timber gives the maximum strength when the load is applied parallel to the grains. That is in a longitudinal position. This property make them use uh, as the beams and the lintels because we are getting uh, their maximum strength in their longitudinal position. Velocity of sound in timber is usually 2 to 17 times that of uh, the velocity of that in the air. Next property is timber is an isotropic material. Because uh, we get the if there is no defect, we get the similar properties in all direction. So timber is an isotropic material. Modulus of elasticity of the timber is 0.5 to 1 to into 10 to the power 4 newton per mm square. Next is an important point that is uh, timber have its tensile strength as maximum that is the tensile strength of the timber is greater than its flexural strength which is greater than its compressive strength so a timber is more suitable in tension kind of situations next is recommended moisture content we have already said that the weight of the timber is measured when the moisture content is 12 percentage that is it is the optimum moisture content for measuring the weight of a timber like that 
If you are using timber as a door, as a structural member, they should possess as optimum moisture content. Let's see them. If you are using timber as a building frames, it should have a moisture content of about 8 to 12 percentage. Next, as if you are using it as a structural member, it will have a moisture content of 10 to 15 percentage. For door, it is 12 to 20 percentage. For window, it is 10 to 16 percentage. So this is the optimum moisture content when we are commercially using timber. So that's the end of this video. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share this video with the friends who are preparing for competitive exam. And if you wish to see similar videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.